Snapchat, I briefly told you guys that the main reason that I have been MIA for most of June and part of July, sorry there's a fly in here if you see it whizzing by. Anyway, so I've been kind of MIA because I have been traveling, it is family time at the beginning of summer for me and as much as I love being here with you guys and filming and talking to you guys, like family is number one. So I'm back now, the traveling is over, time to get back to our regularly scheduled programming and for record I did film this look for you guys before I went to Florida last week. It just was corrupted when I went to go edit it, so I had to redo it. Anyway, so here we are, and if you haven't noticed, there are some differences. I am in my new office space. Well, it's not technically new. It's the same room, but I finally got furniture, and if you follow me on Snapchat, you've heard me bitch and moan about my office for the longest time, so to finally have it in order is just amaze balls. I have a lot to say in this intro. I will leave a timestamp like somewhere around here for you guys to fast forward to if you don't care to have to say in the next few minutes. So speaking of social media, I want you guys, if you're interested, to check out my Twitter. It's down below. I've had it for like two years and I'm really super inactive on it, but I'm going to start communicating with you guys a lot more through Twitter and all that good stuff. So if you want to know what I'm up to, check that out. Let's talk about the tutorial today. So this tutorial is actually the third time that I have filmed this look so to speak. Um, it's a traditional black smoky eye that flatters everyone and it never goes out of style and it looks great on every single person who wears it. As beautiful of a look that it is, as it is, that it is, whatever. Even though it looks really good, this can kind of be one of the more difficult looks to do, pull off, and execute. And I think that that's why I've done it thrice times now because I might discover some new products or techniques that make it a little bit easier. If you attempt to do this and you're still struggling with it, um, I would check up here. There will be a link to my traditional Smoky Eye 101 video. It really breaks it down, takes it step by step for you. So if you have any questions or it didn't turn out quite right through this tutorial, watch that one. The technique is exactly the same. The look is different, but the technique is exactly the same. I really wanted to take the opportunity to use my Kat Von D shade light eye palette. This is like an amazing, amazing, amazing eyeshadow palette. I don't know why I'm like the last person in the world to finally get it, but it is stunning. It's beautiful. I think every single person that buys it will get a crap ton of use out of it. If you're a professional makeup artist or if you're aspiring makeup artists especially, this would be a must have in your kit because you could just have something like this and just like a little bit of a selection of pigments and maybe some cream shadows and you could create a multitude of beautiful, flattering, awesome looks. It's just, it's, an, it's a staple as far as I'm concerned. This will be used quite a bit by me. I absolutely love it. So I hope you guys enjoy the tutorial. Sorry I talked so much. Uh, if you have not subscribed yet, please do so. Click the down bar for links to all my social media platforms and information about all the products to use. Thumbs up the video if you enjoy it and I will catch you in the next one. Love you more than you will ever know. Alright guys, as always, we are starting off with the primer. Today I'm using MAC Painterly Paint Pot. Please let me know if you know any dupes. And I'm just going to put that all over my lid with the Sigma 3D HD Mini Precision Kabuki Brush and blend it out with my finger. And then I'm going to take a concealer a little bit lighter than the rest of my skin tone. And I'm going to use that to carve out the underside of the brow. Please excuse the state of my brows, my hair, the jankiness of this video. Um, like I said before, this is the first time back after a long vacation. And to include the fact that I haven't used this setup before, it's just gonna take a little getting used to, so bear with me. Once I've laid it down, I'll take that same HD 3D Sigma Kabuki brush situation and kind of feather it downwards onto my lid to help blend it in to the shadow. And then I will set my work with a fluffy brush and some translucent powder to aid in the blending process. Taking this peach color from my Kat Von D shade light palette, I'm going to start dusting this back and forth on the very upper part of my crease with the fluffiest brush that I'm going to go in on my crease, which is the Sigma E40. I will leave my smoky eye video down below, but you're basically just going to work this from inner corner to outer corner. I say in pretty much every video, do not underestimate the importance of your crease color. Then I'm taking this red and this brown shade from the same palette, mixing them together on my brush and taking this a little bit lower and a little bit more precisely on my lower crease area. You definitely have a higher crease and a lower crease. This is basically going right into my socket. It might come down a little bit through the blending process, but that's okay because we will cover it up. You do wanna keep the top parts of these colors as high as you can for as long as you can because you definitely need the darker colors you go in with later all over the lid to have something to blend into. Once again, if you have questions or you wanna see a little bit more of an in-depth explanation of this particular kind of technique, I would highly recommend checking out my smoky eye video. Then take in the gray and the black, mostly gray, a hint of the black on a smaller brush, even lower 
on the lid. I'm going to go even lower down on that crease. I didn't want to go with the straight black because it wasn't going to easily blend into the red brown situation that we had going on our lid. And then adding just a little bit of that darkness, not going full blown with the black color will aid in the blending process. Cause like I said, if I'd have just went with just the black, it would have been hard to blend. And then going in with the fluffy brush with the red brown mixture, just to soften up the edges. Taking any cream brown shadow you have, I recommend brown. It's a lot easier to work with than black. I'm gonna pat this all over my lid using a flat synthetic brush. You just wanna lay this down as low underneath those colors as you can. You don't want to take the texture of the cream too high up. It can be difficult to work with after you do. And then I'm gonna start laying some black eyeshadow from the palette all over the area that I laid the brown shadow on top of. I wish I would have used like a fluffier brush, the Sigma, I can't remember the name, the flat brush that they have would have been a lot easier to work with than this one, but I just grabbed this one out of habit. I'll link the brush I'm referring to down below, but you're just gonna work this all the way over the lid and slightly take your brush up sideways up into those colors, but keep it as low as you possibly can. And then you'll take a smaller brush just to sandwich and blend those two edges together. You wanna blend the edge of the red brown mixture and the charcoal mixture with the black. Take your time on this step. It definitely is the most crucial, but as long as you do it thoroughly and correctly, it will definitely soften it up and make it nice and smooth and seamless. Then I just popped a highlight color up there. Any shimmery highlight you have will do. And then taking this Makeup Forever Aqua XL Liner to tight line. I know this is super gross looking, but it's the only way I can tight line. And my Sigma Line Ace Liquid Liner. Any liquid liner you have will do. Just to kind of add some depth to the lower lash line and hide my lash band in the future when I put my lashes on. Um, in the last video I did like this, I used a wing liner, but I am no longer into that kind of a look with a dark smoky eye, but do what you want. Then taking the Makeup Forever, I can't remember the name of it, I'll link it down below. It's an amazing mascara. I'm really, really into it. Just to coat my lashes, prepare them for falsies, curl them, and then slap these bad boys on. These are the Coco Lashes and the Style Amore. They're really, really pretty. Um, as you guys know, and I've been watching my channel for a while, Coco Lashes are my definite favorites. I use them all the time. But in retrospect, I wish I would have gone in with something fuller. You live and you learn. Then taking my Makeup Forever Hydrating Primer all over my skin. My skin's in a really rough patch right now, so please forgive it. Then taking my Pore Minimizing Primer from Smashbox, just in the areas of my face that have the most texture, which are my cheeks and my forehead and a little bit on my nose as well. Then I'm gonna mix the Makeup Forever HD and the Benefit Hello Flawless Foundation together on the back of my hand and apply it all over my skin with the Sigma Kabuki brush. This is the 3D Kabuki brush, it's my favorite. I use it all the time. Um, this foundation is super yellow. I'm not even gonna be like, oh, it's just the camera. It looks good in person. No, it looked yellow in person too. And this is around the time I figured it out. I could not understand what the deal was, but you can correct things like this with concealer. Speaking of concealer, I'm going in with the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer. This is the same shade, medium light neutral. I'm just gonna put this all over the tops of my cheekbones, the bridge of my nose, my cupid's bow, and my chin. I mean, it still looks pretty yellow after I'm done with all of the steps, and I'm gonna go in and try to neutralize it a little bit, but I mean, I'd come this far. I wasn't gonna wipe it all off just for the sake of getting it more correct. I just know in the future that the Hello Oxygen Foundation is really, I don't know if I got the wrong shade completely or if it just pulls more to the yellow side, and since I am more neutral, or even more pinky neutral. It just was not good time. So anyway, I'm just gonna blend that concealer out with a damp Real Technique sponge. I do this in every single video. I always blend out my liquid products with a sponge after I apply them with a brush just to absorb excess product. Then I'm gonna take the Bare Mineral Stroke of Light Concealer. This is a pinky based concealer. I wanted to use this to kind of help once again, neutralize the center of my face a little bit so it wasn't so yellow. And also add even a little bit more light to the areas of my skin. And then once again, blending it out with the same Real Technique sponge that I used before. Then going in with my Kat Von D shade light contour palette, I'm gonna mix the pale like ivory shade and the yellow shade together. As far as this kit is concerned, I don't know what I think about it yet. I mean, the powders themselves, like the formula is really great, but I don't know how I feel about the colors because even though I mixed the white shade, if you will, and the yellow together, it was still really yellow. And it honestly could just be because the foundation was already so yellow that I was just feeling like I looked super jaundicey, but I'll let you know what I think in the future. The formulas are really, really amazing. I will say that though. 
Then taking the Smashbox Pro Fusion bronzer and the brush that I mentioned in my last video, the vegan cruelty free brushes. I'll link that video down below if you're interested. I'm just going to start bronzing the perimeter of my skin. So I'm going to use it on my forehead, the back of my jaws, a little bit on my jawline and some down my neck. Love this bronzer. Love this brush. The combination is heaven. And then just to mix it up a little bit so it's not the same in every single video, I thought I'd show you guys how I contour my nose. I lay down a thin line of Laura Mercier translucent powder with a beauty blender and then I take a light contour shade and run that on an eyeshadow brush that's really thin as close to that powder that I laid down as possible. Then I'm just going to carve out the back of my cheeks with that contour kit. Once again, super pigmented, super blended, super nice. I'll leave that nose contour shade just to chill on my center of my nose for a while, just to lighten it up even more and blend out the rest of my contour colors and contour my forehead and my jaw and all that good stuff. I wanted to be really sculpted today, but that's like nothing new. It's every day, I guess. And then I'll take some of that cooking powder, which is the Laura Mercier translucent and just pack it on the sides of my nose to clean it up and make sure I'm not bringing that darkness too far down the sides. And I will leave that to chill for a minute and dust it off with a brush. It doesn't take long. I think that kind of adding all the cooking powders gives me a reverse contouring effect. So I don't have to add too much darkness. And then taking Milani Corderoso Luminous Blush and just putting that all over my cheeks. It's really, really nice. I'm super into these Milani Luminous Brushes. Blushes! I can never say that right. And I'm just going to add some more cooking powder to the bottom of my face. This is why I didn't powder my whole face earlier in the video. I've just kind of taken to doing my cooking powder as my all over face setting situation. It definitely works in making sure that the makeup that I put on my face lasts all day and in the summer heat that is crucial. Then going in with that same black eyeliner I use in my waterline, I'm going to put this all in my bottom waterline and kind of start smudging this out with an angle brush. It's one of the vegan ones that I mentioned in my last video. This is an easier way to lay down a base to build your dark shadows on top of instead of just going in ham sandwich with a black eyeliner and then it getting a little out of control. So if you lightly smudge a little bit of that pigment and that formula down onto your bottom lash line, it's a lot easier to deal with. Just take your time with it. Then I started adding some black shadow to cover that up and just really add the depth and dimension and make it extra smoky. And then took a little bit of a more fluffy brush with the red brown mixture to smudge it out. I definitely go back and forth with smudging it out, adding more black, smudging it out, adding more black, smudging it out, adding more black, adding more liner. This is one of those things you're just gonna have to play with to get it to the intensity, the shape and the blended areas that you want. Just take your time. Then I'm doing bottom lash mascara with that same Makeup Forever mascara and moving on to dust away that cooking powder. And now all the cooking is done. I promise it's time to leave the kitchen. <laughs> Just make sure you really get all that stuff off. For highlighter, I'm using the uh, Laura Geller Peach Swirl and one of these vegan brushes I told you about before. It's a fan brush, but it's really fluffy on the inside of it. So it just posited, deposits, deposits the pigment and the shimmer really, really nice all over the cheeks. I'm super duper into it. For lips, I'm going to take MAC Strip Down Lip Liner. Please, guys, let me know dupes for MAC Lip Liners if you have any because I am definitely on the hunt. For lipstick, I'm using ColourPop Midi Liquid Lipstick. It's a super nude, almost pinky color. It's a little too nude for my tasting, so I decided to lighten it up with some gloss, and for that, I use Buxom Liquid Lip Gloss in Samantha. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you in the next one. Bye!